Hi, everybody. It's really nice to be here to be with you as if we were all drinking tea in the ugly mug right now, but we're not. But still, it's really nice to be here with you. Um, hmm. Okay, continue. Um, so I'm going to read probably a lot of new stuff, um, maybe one or two older things, but I'm, I'm trying out some new material on you. I hope you don't mind. Um, oh, those bookshelves right back there, we built them ourselves out of plumbing pipe and a wood plank. It's really actually not that hard. So um, you can follow up with me if you want some information on how to build yourself um, similar shelves. Um, okay, so my first, oh, and there's, I'm sorry, there's a lot of F-bombs in these poems. It's just how it sort of, how it panned out. Um, so, but it's late enough now for that kind of material anyway, I think. My first poem is called Helen of Troy is High as Fuck. And it has an epigraph. Then the child of Zeus, Helen, decided she would mix the wine with drugs to take all pain and rage away, to bring forgetfulness of every evil. And that's from uh, the translation of the Odyssey by Emily Wilson. If I knew the difference between entomology and etymology, I'd know my either. I'd know if you meant meaning or just a clacking of beetles, just a phalanx of carapace carried by a hundred legs, as in centi, or thousand, as in milli. But my mind is modest these days. Even modestly minded, I know it's no mistake that abduction shares a word with what penetrates me, rape. What do you know from one? Was she merely hogtied and dragged in a flaxen bag from all she ever knew? Or was she pressed face to the dirt and entered? Either way, they say rape. If you wonder what made this face, this curve of cheek, consider how the candlelight catches faint down where my jaw meets this elegance of neck. You must recall my mother was force fucked by a swan and that's our fate, our citizenship so tenuous, we even get taken by the birds. You've heard how we bury our children, how we watch war made with wooden horses, how we get dragged to hell because poor Hades needs a date. And as consolation, they give us poppy powder for our wine. I say another dram of dream in mine. I am such a scholar for forgetting, such a student for letting go. I say set the table to a swarm of servants buzzing in the corners of this opulent palace. I say anoint the chalice to Menelaus who lets me be as shit-faced as I please until morning wipes the prior day clean and I can try living again. Until then, I may hallucinate that the thousand launched ships never come back. Will you, my guest, drink to that? All right. Uh, Man, sometimes poems, you just start out writing something and then they just get so angry, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so this next poem is called Ode to Billy Idol. Billy, tell me I'm punk enough that I could puke in my mouth a little because I once wore a pin of my boyfriend on the left quadrant of my jean jacket as if he were the keeper of my heart and not you who stayed pinned on the right. At 15, desire sends a body down a dark lane without a flashlight so it blindly gropes or gets groped. Let's conjugate this failure of tenderness, this ignorance for touch. I knew Nothing except how need sent me hurtling like a self-driving car 
toward what would break it. All I ever wanted was my MTV, a boyfriend, and your primal Elvis thing, the bleached incubus of it whispering hard thrust and long stroke in my ear until I could hear blood beating in my head until I was feverish with the sound of it all, so I pinned a stupid boy to my left breast as if he deserved me, as if my virginity were a dirty note to slip into his back pocket, like he could pay me for it with bong hits, then cross his heart, hope to die, and lie about everything to our faces. Mine, a hot mess of mascara and baby fat, Yours sneering from faded denim, where you surveyed every mess I made, yet always deemed me worthy. Um, okay, we're going to change the tune now. We're going to turn the volume down a little bit, put on something a little more mellow. This is called um, Physics Lesson for the Humanities. In sixth grade physics, my son learns that energy can't be created or destroyed, that it merely changes form and moves around. And I can't help but think about grief in the same way, how it is a force that slips from person to person, how some harbor it for years, how it resides inside them like so much dark matter, how it moves on to fill the next vessel completely. I think too of all those apologies we blow around like snow crystals that never melt here on the tundra of this human condition. Last week, my old dog died and I collected so many that I ran out of space for them. Every drawer stuffed full of so sorry, so sorry building up in drifts in all the corners, so sorry like dust bunnies under each radiator, so sorry soft as rabbit fur too, enough to absorb the sound of the wail of grief's loneliness. A week isn't very long, so I'm still keeping a few for myself and sending the rest back into the world. One perfect crystal of apology blown from my palm for the friend whose own dog died. Another sent to the poet whose daughter took her own life. One more for the cousin whose son OD'd. Energy arriving to move us before moving on. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on my time. Okay. So uh, I was raised Catholic. Catholics like to have saints for everything. Um, this is called Prayer to Saint Anthony, Patron Saint of Lost Things. When I grew up, uh, we used to get something called the Penny Saver. And people would um, pay to post their little... Um, prayers to St. Anthony, asking him to help them find stuff. Um, and this has a little epigraph too. It says, St. Anthony, who received from God the special power of restoring lost things, grant that I may find that which has been lost. Grant that I may find my mojo misplaced in middle age and replaced with progressive lenses and a penchant for Sunday crosswords. How much mojo have you restored and what does it look like and is it usually in the couch cushions with the Apple TV remote? Tony, how many millions of earrings have you found since the beginning of Catholic time? A theoretical glimmering mountain of baubles that reach your cloud? Is it knobby with pearls and woven through with gold wires? You must manage one hell of a spreadsheet patron saint of relief, of signs for missing cats, of hopeless pleading for new hymens. Have you any helpers or does your nervous sweat bead on Biden on your pate? 
And do you wipe it with the hem of your brown robe? Do the voices clamor and clamor like cathedral bells ringing in your ears? Tony, do you cry when you can't find a boy because he already sits by your side? And the boy's mother keeps you up all night with her begging, but you are powerless to return anything besides ashen flesh. Do you search in such instances for your own mojo, convinced you're better off restoring heirloom brooches and fountain pens, better at bringing a corgi back from his wandering? Would you like to switch jobs with Francis and frolic for once with the lambs instead of just sending the lost ones home? On the news, I saw you bring a body back from Nam and saw how you reunited birth mother with daughter. We're always losing Tony, St. Anthony who received from God the special power of restoring lost things. Where are all the socks, lighters and wallets, the hair ties, lip balms and iPhones? Do you keep collections to count in heaven? some calm in the careful numeration of unclaimed car keys. All right, I'm doing okay. This next one is called grieving as a political act. Fuck dignity, the black veil behind which we are to stifle our tears with a tissue, the diminutive size of lapel ribbons, the way they are not meant to be interrogated, the flags folded into triangular boxes and propped on mantles, fuck sitting Shiva in a dark corner, the way we don't know what to say to the lady crying on the metro, to the moments of silence, the pat platitudes of thoughts and prayers and kids hug tighter, by men whose women do the child rearing anyway, fuck pulling yourself together and putting on a brave face. It's time to cry a bucket full and dump it on their heads. Time to sob baptism, to wail cleansing, to weep writing off the wall that says we keep our grief in cages. It is time we embarrass with our anguish, time we fall on our knees in front of men wearing suits, time we scream the names of our dead in their faces, time for spittle and rage. You have permission to carry the body of your child into their rarefied chambers to say, have a closer look at the work you have done. We are throwing open the doors to our mourning chambers. We will make you look inside. Okay, a few more. I'm trying to be a light reader and not go over my time. This next one is called Yours. Suppose he was yours who saw rust at first turn of the green wheel handle. Your yard slicked down, sprinklers ticking away days meted out in trips to 7-Eleven and the community pool. Suppose he was yours who saw brown, waited for it to run clear, then drank down the whole metallic feel of it from the copper end of a hose. Summer spread before him like a growing puddle. Suppose he was yours who bathed in the river of your tub, scratched until his skin oxidized, flaking off in his sheets. Suppose you saw pinpricks of his blood, but washed those sheets in the same water anyway. Suppose they said boil it, and you did, but that only made it worse. Suppose he was yours who was told his anger will fleck and spread unchecked, was told bits of heavy metal will damn his lobes. Suppose he was yours who was tested and told he will lose himself in a wash so sick everyone already knew you couldn't eat the fish caught there. Suppose he said, I'm just going to be stupid anyway. What would well up in you and where would that poison run to?
All right, this is my last poem. It's called, So Help Me God. I will not let my heart fester with hatred. I will not let my heart fester with hatred. It's hard, but I will not let my heart fester with hatred. I will not let the shell of a man devoid of conscience, untenanted by soul, bring out my witch at her cauldron, cooking curses and sending a cloud of dank, black and withering ill will to the east and south. I will not see my joy rubbed away by the calloused hand of malice. I will not stick pins in anything orange. I will not vomit the grace that has fed me these 50 years until I become gaunt with the sickness called hatred. I will not eat the bitter skin, but throw out the fruit, will not feed from the loaf of loathing. I will not become naive to believe that any man can be redeemed, but I will not spit death wishes into words, will not poison the tips of arrows with those words. I will not drink myself into the sots circle of hell where the devil winks and says he knows how I feel. I will not be buffed to a diamond's hardness, will not glitter with cynicism. I will not see my buoyancy sunk by the pirate ship of disgust. I will not shoot down my thing with feathers. I will not let ghouls haunt my castle in the sky. I will not be unmoved. I will not be unmoored from the belief that things will get better. I will it not, will not, won't. Thank you, friends.